In this video, we're going from A to Z, how to light, shoot, and then edit your way into this final epic environmental black and white portrait. My name is Pi, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up, friends? My name is Pi. Welcome to Adorama TV. Let's get right into this. So I am inside of Lightroom Classic. And what I'd like to do first is kind of talk about how this image was shot. We'll show you some B-roll and behind the scenes, and then we'll go into the actual edit itself. So first, this image was captured for one of my maternity clients. I actually photographed their wedding. You might recognize them from way back. I did this tutorial uh, with Rahul and Divya on how to fake sunset with a flash, how to fake golden hour. And this is Rahul and Divya. And it's so cool when these couples come back, I have this relationship developed with them. And you know, now I'm photographing their families as their families are growing. Anyway, that's neither here nor there, but it's just a really fun and cool part of the job that I absolutely love. So how was this shot? Okay, so let's talk first on the lighting side. You'll notice from one of these other images and also probably from the B-roll that Juliana is actually holding a light. That is the Profoto B10. So we're talking a 250 watt second flash right to camera left. You'll also notice that I have her feathering it up. What we're doing here is she's tipping it back. So that light is kind of barely just grazing them. We're just trying to add a little bit of fill light to this scene. So you'll notice that even in the raw file, they're not really all that bright and I'm not aiming for them to be all that bright. So working through our camp framework, right? Composition, ambient light, modify, photograph. Let me tell you kind of what I'm thinking. When we arrive to this scene and we have these incredible clouds and the sun kind of poking through, I want to have all the detail in this scene. I want to have that entire dynamic range. But I don't want the couple so bright that they just kind of stand out. So compositionally, I'm aiming to place them kind of towards the center, fill the frame around them with this rock and environment leading into them. But then ambient light wise, I'm leaving it a little bit brighter than you might expect for like a typical dramatic shot, right? A dramatic shot might be down here. I'm leaving it about one stop brighter. So we're at 1 1250th of a second at F2 ISO 50, and I'm on the 28 to 70 at 28 millimeters going wide. Because of this, I'm going to use high speed sync with that flash. And at that distance with a B10, Juliana's pretty dang far away from them. Uh, most likely we have it at full power. So you're talking, you're going to want a medium strobe to do this. It could be anything. It could be a, you know, Godox 8200. It could be the B10. Anything's going to be just fine, but it's feathered up and it's direct flash, no modifier. So we end up with a, a shot like these where there's a good balance between the, the subject just being lifted a little bit and the background. So a normal natural light exposure might be kind of somewhere up here, right? Where everything's kind of bright, the sky's kind of blown. And if I, I think this was actually without flash on this one. Yeah, I think there might've been a tiny bit of flash on that one. I wanna find one that has absolutely no flash. This one has a little bit. Let's see if I flip back to, okay. So one of these, these this is with their son earlier, right? So as we are you know, setting up, you'll notice that they're really dark and in the shadows. So if I wanted to bring up their skin tone, I'm having to go up like a stop and a half. And that's what kills the entire background. So the only other option is to process it as an HDR image where I drop the highlights and raise the shadows and do all this. But then we get kind of funky, you know, skin tones. We have to do other things. So what I'm opting for is that light bit of flash to kind of start with. And let me just go back here so I can actually find our image. And we get that. So we're at 1 12th of a second. We're at F2 ISO 50 full power on that flash, but feathered up and kind of at a good distance. And we get them posed. We land with this raw file. This would be a great time to pause the video. Go ahead and download the exercise file so that you can follow along if you'd like, or you can load up any image that you'd like. But now we're going to get into the editing side. So we're inside of Lightroom Classic. What I'm going to do to kind of make this a little bit quicker is I'm going to use Visual Flow's black and white pack as our baseline. And then I'm going to walk you through all the steps because I don't expect that all of you are going to have it. So I'm going to go through all the settings. 
But then we're also going to get into local adjustments and we're going to utilize some of the latest masking features in the Lightroom update to get to our final look. And you're going to see how powerful all of it is when you kind of combine it. So what I'm going to do is jump over to the black and white mixer. This is a, a recent pack that we released. That's really fun. Allows for a lot of different, really cool black and white. It's almost like having silver effects, but inside of Lightroom, I'm going to go to HDR portrait. So you have these kind of different variants to start with, right? I'm going to do HDR portrait and then we have modifiers. I'm going to do dramatic deep blues. Now from here, I'll add a stop just to bring the skin tones up a little. And now let's go through the settings. And by the way, the actual pack, so the VF mixer pack, what's fun about this. And you know what? I'm going to do something different. Let's start with classic portrait. And again, I'm going to walk through all the settings in just a moment. Okay. We'll still do the dramatic portrait deep blues. But this also lets me show you, we built in this profile for the black and white mixer that allows you to control intensity. We call it the VF mixer. So it's this kind of cool, I'm not going to actually use it for this tutorial because then you're going to be like, I don't have that because that's custom to the, the presets. So let's scroll down and look at exactly what's happening. If we go to, well, you can see in the base tones. And, and again, if you're not using a visual flow, you're just going to pause and dial these things in as we go. Okay and you essentially then have the preset. You're welcome. And no, it's not piracy because, hey, I developed these presets. So if I want, I can pick and choose a couple here and there to give out to y'all. You're welcome. So on the highlight side, we're pulling highlights down a little bit. I'm actually gonna bring contrast down. Um, we're pulling the shadows up, pulling the whites down, pulling the blacks up, minusing out a little texture, adding quite a bit of clarity, adding a good amount of dehaze to plus 40. Okay, this is what helps us to kind of retain a lot of the sky. So we're getting the dehaze up, but do keep in mind it's going to affect skin tone too. So you want to kind of balance that out. In the tone curve, we have an S curve that's adding overall contrast and pulling up exposure and then keeping the black point sort of fairly neutral and low. The black and white mix is important. This is where we're pulling down those blues. So this blue tone right here is being pulled through the black and white mixer. I'm also adding a little bit of... Uh, luminosity to skin tones. Now, one important thing too is before you flip to black and white, and you guys might remember this from other black and white tutorials that I've done, is I like to actually dial in the white balance first. And the reason for that is because I can't really tell what the color is, right? When we flip this to black and white. So if I press V to go back, I can't really see what's the right temperature. But if I do that first, and I get the skin tone to kind of where it should be, then when I jump into the black and white, it actually has a very big effect over the black and white mixer because now I'm dramatically and directly affecting those color tones as opposed to if it's too warm, like if I set the image up here, right? There's really not that many blues to be adjusting. So when I flip this over to a black and white and I start adjusting the blues up and down, notice that they don't change that much. So the black and white mixer is a function of the colors that are there, which is relating to your white balance. It, it has everything to do with your white balance. So watch as I adjust the white balance, how the image is being affected by the black and white mixer. Now notice down here, it might be a little bit too much, right? We start getting some posterization, but right here, it's just right. So find that nice neutral white balance and then flip over to black and white. And that's the easiest way to, to get to the right place. Okay, there's no color grading being done. Under detail, we have kind of typical detail settings set up. You guys can pause and dial those in. That's really just about it for this particular look. What I want to show you now is we're going to start working into uh, a bit of local adjustments. And let's start first not using the AI pieces. So we've got our baseline look here, okay? I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a virtual copy and just show you where the standard black and white conversion was. And maybe we'll match exposure, right? So it's not fair to not show exposure. So let's show exposure. So this is where it was. This is where we are so far. It's already really cool. Okay, let's do this first. I'm going to grab a masking tool. I'm going to use just a, you know what? I want to start with AI and I want you to see exactly why. So if I do the other step first, you're not going to see exactly why I'm doing it. So let's start with AI first. What I'm going to do is select subject. Okay, what this is going to do is use Lightroom's new masking features, which are very powerful. I've done a video on this, by the way. So if you want to go into detail on that, you can check out that video. But it's going to make this selection. And it does a really nice job. On some images, it's going to be more accurate. I expect that over time, it's going to get even better and better. But even right now, very powerful. 
We also have this masking menu now that shows up that allows us to not only control this particular layer, but then each additional one that we add. So we can layer these masks. You will notice that right now I have this show overlay turned on. And if your overlay is a color, it's because of this option right here. So if you select color overlay, this is the default. And it's usually set to around like, you know, this level of opacity. That's what it's going to show you normally. What I like to do is if you are going to use the color, turn the opacity up. And then if you want a more detailed version, I like to go white on black. So remember, like any mask, white is going to reveal, black is going to conceal. So whatever effect I apply right now is being applied to the couple and the couple only. Okay. This is important to know. So what I'm going to do, there are a couple different ways of doing this. One, I could select the subject. And if you go to the menu, you can either click here and go to invert, or you can actually just press apostrophe and it's going to invert the selection. So if I want to select everything, but the couple, I would choose subject and then invert it. And now I'm selecting the entire background. In fact, if I bring the background down, you notice it looks pretty dang good, right? And the, the mask is actually really nice. What I'm going to do is this so that you don't have to get, see, if I show you this mask again, Lightroom's mask is not perfect, right? In fact, if I zoom into it, can I zoom into it? I think I can. Yeah. If I zoom into it, you will notice that there's areas of his face that are actually selected. I could refine that. I could fix that. But a quick and kind of dirty way around this is to just not make your adjustment too big. See, if the adjustment is too dramatic, then you really start to notice where the mask is imperfect, right? But if the adjustment is on the more subtle side, like maybe a, a half stop on the exposure, then it's not really that big of a deal. In fact, if I zoom in, you really don't notice at all anything is going on. I like that because it makes my job and my life a little bit easier. So I'm darkening everything around them by pulling the exposure down and I'm going to go to a place where it's not noticeable, meaning the mask is not noticeable. And that's right about here, right? Now, if I want, I can click add. So I'm going to go add and we're going to go select sky this time. Okay. Now this is going to select everything in the image that is sky and we'll see how good of a job it does actually does pretty dang good. Okay. So that's the overlay and let's go ahead and start dropping it and see what's being affected. So notice that they are still being affected. And this is where I would have to make some refinement to this. So what I could do is over this sky, I can select and say subtract and then choose select subject. So I'm subtracting the subjects from the mask and let's see if it gets it any better at that point. And yeah, it does. So select sky by itself didn't quite get us there, but when we go select sky and then we minus out subject, we get to a better place, right? So let's turn off and you don't have to turn off the overlay. As soon as you start making an adjustment, it will actually uh, just show it over the image. So this go around, what I'm going to do is actually drop down and we're going to go to sky and cloud. And you'll notice that this is going to be, uh, well, these are the settings. You can just pause and dial those in. I'm going to end up somewhere kind of in between. So let's go about to here. Let's raise the black point a bit and go kind of right in between all of this. All right. The reason being is that the sky is now starting to get quite dark and I'm starting to see a little bit of that mask. And so what I would need to do is actually refine that mask a little bit more, which I can, I can go in and I can actually refine it, or I can just make the adjustment a little bit more on the subtle side. So first, I'm just going to choose to make the adjustment a little bit more subtle. Just about here is fine. Okay. Now, if you zoom in and you can kind of notice some close up masking stuff, you can potentially fix that. The other option to this is just pulling back the dehaze a little bit because dehaze in and of itself is what can often create that haloing effect on these little edges. So I can pull back dehaze raise uh, uh, drop the overall exposure a little bit and be good to go right here. This is where I wanted to show you guys my last step. The last step that I like to do is actually to bring in the radial filter tool and do an exposure burn at like say 0.5. So with the radial burn, I'm going to drop it right into the center. So you can do this by pressing M. Okay. We're going to drop it right over the center. It's showing the mask right now. So let's just turn that off for a second and then let's pull it. We got to invert this and then pull it back. So let's go ahead. That's funny as I actually have 
a tool set up just to short <laughs> shortcut this whole thing. So let's invert this. There we go. And then now we can kind of pull this in. So this is my way of sort of bringing attention in and making everything dramatic, but then kind of blending it a little bit where it's a little more subtle. So I like to do some of those adjustments over the sky, some of the adjustments over the background. You can even do some directly over the, the, the subjects and the couple themselves. But then to use that radial filter as a final adjustment, so that way we get to a little bit more of a refined sort of result. We're not relying on those other things and making those masks too heavy. If you are going to make the masks more intense and you're going to strengthen those settings and those adjustments, then you do need to make sure that they're more precise. So this is sort of a, a quick and easy workaround. That's it. So this is what I think is a great looking image. If I want, I can drop in one last little uh, filter. I'm going to do a top down radial filter and we're going to just pull the exposure down a little bit more on the sky. Okay. And I love it. Looks fantastic. So let's take a look now at the final versus the before. So this would have been just the standard black and white conversion. And then here is the final black and white image. So a little bit of Lightroom adjustments and understanding the way black and whites work in conjunction with the AI masking gives you this really powerful tool inside of Lightroom to get to incredibly epic black and white edits and uh, hope it's helpful. If it is, I'd love for you guys to comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you want to see in future videos. Any questions you might have, I do read all the comments. Don't get a chance to respond, but I do read them and get your guys' ideas, and it's very helpful. So thank you for that. Subscribe to the channel if you guys want updates, and make sure you turn on the notifications because new videos go up all the time, but you won't actually be notified unless you have notifications on. In the meantime, if you guys want to follow me personally, you can find me at PyJersa on Instagram. That's it for me. Peace.